Today I'm going to show you how to make this wood-covered notebook. Hey guys, welcome back to FLA Labs. I'm excited for today's project, so let's dive right in. First, you're going to need to pick up a notebook. I found this one at Walmart for cheap, and it looked perfect because the cover was pretty thick already. I also checked to make sure that the binding was the style that could be opened so that the covers can be removed. With the binding open, I removed first the back cover and then the front cover. The next step was to measure the cover that came with the notebook. Be sure to figure out exactly how far the bindings are spaced and how big the holes were. I also measured the paper at this step because I noticed that the paper was a little smaller than the cover. Once you have your dimensions, the next step is to model the cover of the notebook in Fusion 360. This step might seem intimidating, but it's really not bad. The first step is to draw a rectangle that's the same height and width as your notebook. I added these round corners so that it would look like the original. Next we're going to make the holes for the binding. Start by drawing a square that matches the dimensions of your binding. Be sure that it's spaced appropriately from the edge of the cover, top to bottom and left to right. Now we're going to use the rectangular pattern tool to turn our one hole into 17 holes in my case and space them appropriately to match the binding. Once your sketch matches the dimensions of your notebook cover, we'll extrude it to three millimeters, which is the thickness of the material we'll be using. Now the easiest way I know of to make a cut file from a 3D model in Fusion 360 is to create a new sketch on the surface and project all the features of that body. Then we can rename that sketch and export it as a DXF file. This is the logo that I'd like to put on my notebook. I got it online, and in most cases you can do the same if you're making it for yourself and not selling it. Bring in the DXF file from Fusion 360 and start to position my logo on the cover. Once I have the logo to the right size, I use the built-in trace tool to turn my image into a vector that can be used to cut. At this point I see that there are a few places that will need to be repaired, but it looks pretty close to what I was hoping for. Now I'm going to use the built-in alignment tools to make sure that the logo is centered from top to bottom. Next, I can zoom in, ungroup, and delete the duplicate lines that were created in error by the outline tool. Once that's done, I can go back and use the Edit Nodes feature to clean up any of the lines that don't look quite right. Once that's done, it's time to connect to the laser and start aligning our project with the material. For this project, I'm using Walnut Plywood from Xtool. With the project aligned properly with the material, I can watch a quick preview of the tool path for the project, just to make sure that everything's going to work out okay. And then I hit start.
With the front cover complete, it's time to move on to the back cover. First, I select everything in the working area and turn the outputs off. Then I select just the outline, the cut file, and I turn that output back on. We don't need the logo on the back cover, so basically we tell the software to ignore that part. After watching another quick preview, it's time to cut out the back cover. Whenever I cut this X to apply wood, I find that it leaves a burn residue around all the edges. It wipes off easily with a wet wipe. Maybe it's cheating, but I decided to let AI design the first page of the notebook for me. I wanted this to be a bright, colorful pattern that can be seen through the cutouts in the notebook cover. The first attempt was okay, but I decided to give it a little bit more input and come up with a second design. I was really happy with the second option, so it was time to save the file and then print it out. Off camera, I used the measurements of our notebook paper to make a new cut file so that I can cut out this first page of the notebook. Now that the accent page is ready, it's time to start assembling the notebook. It's a little counterintuitive, but we start by putting in the accent page, then the front cover, and then last we put in the back cover. With that done, the last step is to close all of the bindings. With the bindings closed, the notebook is complete. I couldn't be happier with how the accent page looks through the cutouts in the walnut cover. For any of you out there that don't recognize this logo, Yetch is a company started by a fellow YouTuber named Simone Yetch. I've been watching her build videos on YouTube for years now, and I decided to make her this gift and send it to her as a thank you. If you want to check out the products that Simone sells on her website, I'll put a link in the description. And be sure to send her a link to this video so she can see how we made her notebook. Thanks so much for watching, don't forget to leave a comment below with your project ideas, and I'll see you next time.